Hello, we hope you're doing well. Welcome back to week number one of our European RLCS breakdown. If you guys are new to the channel, well, welcome. I've been waiting for RLCS to start for so long now, and every single week from here on out for the rest of the season, I'll be breaking down uh, for two separate videos, both North American and European RLCS. Now, this week, uh, compared to North America, Europe saw many upsets, many surprises. I'll give you guys a quick summary, as well as announce our four to five awards we give out every single week, and you guys will see what they are. If you don't want to wait, they are timestamped down below. So first of all, the upsets, of course, most notable, um, you know, unfortunately, Unfortunately for me because on my fanboy team I also predicted against them because I was trying to give you guys honest and accurate predictions that being FCB otherwise known as of course Barcelona they take down Dignitas we'll talk about that series more in a bit because so much can be drawn out from that series a very big stalemate I think also a very close series on top of that we also had X flip side those guys now known as the Bricks they lose to Triple Trouble while Triple Trouble also give Mouse Sports their first victory of this season they already have half as many victories as they got the entire last season season. Pretty crazy. And I'm still going to doubt them going forward, but again, we'll break down that matchup a bit as well, because I think a lot has been one of the biggest pickups of the split of the season so far, and he has brought a lot to that team, ironically enough, but will it be enough is still my doubt. And then very lastly, Vitality of all the teams out there, I think looked most convincing in their matchup against PSG. Even with PSG having ping uh, in their advantage, Vitality looked very good, obviously carrying over performance uh, from Leipzig. So I'm really cool, really curious to see what the future of these teams will be. As we enter weeks, you know, three and four, we'll have a more solidified standing for all of you. But here are the current standings, and that is the breakdown so far of what we've seen. Well, we'll break down in, you know, kind of in between matchups as we go later on throughout our awards out there. Just very impressive play from a lot of teams, and some, you know, some play that you didn't expect from the X flip side as well, Dignitas guys. But either way, let's break down our first award, that being the MVP players of week number one. And for me, first of all, has to go to Scrub Killer. I know he was not going to be an award winner on any of the lists out there, although he was well noted a few instances as well. I think all around when it comes to gameplay and presence, both offensively, defensively, setting his teammates up as well. Scrub Killer, to me, when I watched that series, certainly stood out. My overall main MVP, though, the primary winner for this, and if you guys do not know, for each and every award, I can pick multiple winners. You guys can comment down below winners as well. I have to give it to a lot. Now, Mouse Sports only comes with one victory this week. Of course, one of their losses was to TSM, and they did play them very close, although in my mind, TSM had a pretty dominant series. Other people out there think it was pretty close because Mouse Sports goal wise they played it pretty close so argue what you want out there I think this team has made a great move in a lot but my overall argument against them would be is this enough for this roster to change from last season right you change one player can you really change that much he's going to be a great player going forward I really do have faith in that reminds me a lot of the speed acquisition from Flipside tactics he showed up so much this weekend he is the reason why they have at least one win under their belt only need a few more to actually try and qualify for playoffs and at least keep their spot is probably going to be an ultimate first goal for this team a lot this past weekend was my MVP who was yours? And when it came to Team of the Week, there was no opposition here. No real question in my mind. It had to be the most dominant team, that being Vitality. Like I mentioned before, PSG having a significant ping advantage in this matchup, but either way, Vitality carrying out those results. Of course, we saw at DreamHack Leipzig, a top four finish there, and a very, very dominant, uh, of course, that being Vitality after KDOP has joined the roster. So far, a great addition as well, and it's great to see a team out there continue that performance, although the big question for me going forward is, can they do the same thing against PSG against other teams? Because PSG going into this season was still one of my lower rated teams out there um, in terms of inconsistency the issues they've had so far uh, with this current roster and along with that though I guess uh, back to compliments it would be all around Vitality look dominant in these matchups they lose that one game but either way they get the ball rolling winning by I think I think two goals in all three of their victories they get the ball rolling they keep that momentum going and along with that their synergy their communication was stellar I'll show you guys in plays of the week up next exactly why Vitality is my team of the week now speaking of that we go into plays of the week but the first play will not be vitality the next two will be you guys will see what I mean in terms of how dominant they were this past week and the first one though triple trouble and their ceiling shot just sealing the deal yeah I mean Tigre was far post in a, in a spot where a lot could just get to it and squeeze it in and that <laughs> a fancy way to end That's it a good lose, way. but uh, that looked good a little bit of a, a free jump. He stayed in the air and kept Ooh. boosting. Are you kidding me? And the last two plays are going to be both from Vitality as well. The first of which showing their synergy in their passing game against PSG, which I thought was just almost bored. I don't want to say, I don't want to sound really nerdy. It was borderline beautiful to watch on screen alongside that a clip that was not actually clipped. I could not find it on Twitch clips. So I apologize guys, because the quality is going to be so bad. That was KDOP, a cross field goal, which I thought was also spectacular. Very. Back to Chassette who hits it down. Off the side. Scrub will get there first. 
And KDOT passes right back to him. A center ball to Ferry. Ferry taking his time, and he blasts it through. A team effort getting this incredible goal for Vitality. Look at these mini touches back to back, giving a give and go between players. Cut out by Fruity, and now he clears it down. KDOP off his own backboard. Chassette now going for it. And a huge hit from KDOP. Nobody's back. And that is a full field goal for KDOP. And then very lastly, guys, when I first started out telling you the format, it was going to be actually underwhelming players and underwhelming teams separately. But I think I'm going to keep it probably just underwhelming teams. I don't like calling out individual players because it can get a bit negative in the comments. So you guys can leave a comment down below if you think I should do underwhelming players. But I'm not really sure I want to target individual players because I, I don't want to. Uh, it could be a lot of backlash out there if you guys are a fan favorite of a player that I say has a bad week. So besides that, though, a much more broader subject that, of course, being underwhelming teams out there. My two are pretty obvious, really. Dignitas itself, first of all, a very stale game, I would say, and I think almost, I, I think FCB would be with me on this. I think they really capitalized on Dignitas's mistakes. It wasn't necessarily great gameplay from FCB either. They were, you know, pretty cold at times, but they capitalized when they needed to, and I will give them credit where credit is due. FCB, their defensive gameplay might have been the reason, especially when it comes to late game and them having a lead. The way they group around the ball is probably very irritating to play against, and so I would credit that of course, to the reason why Dignitas could not close out these games or even get tie games because FCB was often in the lead by at least a goal. So um, that could be accredited as well in FCB's favor. But either way, Dignitas just not coming out offensively as we thought they would. And I think a lot of missed opportunities shooting wise definitely cost them this series um, against FCB. And I think very underwhelming this weekend, of course, especially with what we expect out of them every event they go to. And then flip side tactics. I'm not really sure what the issue would be here. You know, triple trouble I thought looked pretty impressive this past weekend, but would they be in front of Flipside in my rankings? Probably never, unless they continue the performances they did here. I thought a very back and forth series, right? Triple Trouble takes game one, you think, okay, we have some contention. Flipside takes game two and three, I would say pretty convincingly, and I thought they were going to take the series then after, and then Triple Trouble wake up. You know, they force an overtime here and there, and they take it to game five as well, late, and uh, all of a sudden, they take the series as well. So I think Flipside, I'm going to give them credit, you know, where credit is due. I, I still think a very strong team, hopefully a team that's maybe just a bit slow to wake up, and I hope it's not the fact that, hey, we're flip side. We're only going to show up when the time really matters and it's at a big event because hey, it's a very short season. So, again, it's only an opening loss. You really can't take too much from it. But if flip side do fall behind, just like many teams out there, we got Ghost in North America. They're 0-2. I would hate to see that momentum start to shift the wrong way. But I think yeah, pretty easy choices here, guys. The two most underwhelming teams are two of our top-ranking teams who start out with losses out there. But you guys, of course, can leave your thoughts down below. Who do you think should have won an award, whether it's a good award or a bad award? And as always, my name is Jake. I hope you guys all enjoyed this EU breakdown, of course, of RLCS week number one. If you guys did, leave a like or a comment down below. I will see you back here next week, though, breaking down week two. And until then, guys, take care. <laughs>